In the previous lecture, we understand how to work with stream in Node. In this lecture, we will understand what is buffer. Buffers were introduced to help developers to deal with binary data in an ecosystem that traditionally only deals with strings rather than binaries. Buffers are deeply linked with streams. When the stream processor receives data faster than it can digest, it puts the data in a buffer. Stream in Node.js simply means a sequence of data being moved from one point to other point over time. The whole concept is you have a huge amount of data to process, but you don't need to wait for all the data to be available before you start processing it. A simple visualization of the buffer is when you are watching a YouTube video and the red line goes beyond your visualization point. You are downloading data faster than you are viewing it and your browser buffers it. You can think of a buffer like an array of integers, which each represent a byte of data. Let me show you a very simple example to understand what is buffer and how to work with it. So I'm going to simply create here a variable constant buff is equal to and call a buffer class here. And from this buffer, I'm going to call a method from and here I'm going to specify hey. So this is kind of string. Now just out of that, down here I'm going to say console.log and in the parenthesis, I'm going to say buff. I'm going to call this buff variable. Now let me just save the changes and execute this file. When I execute this file, I'm going to have the result something like this. So as I said earlier, buffer is like an array. So you can access it using square bracket. So down here, I'm going to say console.log and I'm going to just call buff. And in the square bracket, I'm going to specify zero to access the first index of this buffer array. I'm going to save the changes and execute this file. As you can notice, I'm going to have 72 as a result. Here we have three numbers. These three numbers represent this string and this 72 represent this first edge character. These numbers are the unique code that identifies the character in the buffer position. So here's the buffer position and we have the edge character at this position. So this statement will print the unique code of this edge character. So it will print 72. Let me just duplicate this statement and change this index. I'm going to say here 1 and 2. Save the changes and execute this file. You can notice here, I'm going to have 101 and 121. So you can notice here, H has unique code 72, E has unique code 101 and Y has unique code 121. Now let me show you what happened if I try to print this buffer using toString method. If I just see here dot toString, let me show you what would be the result. Save the changes and execute this file. As you can notice, I'm going to have this message as a result. So this buffer is going to print this message using this toString method. As I said earlier, buffer is going to take the data as binaries. Now you can notice we call a buffer class and call the from method of buffer class to create this buffer. Now if you want, you can write to a buffer a whole string of data by using a write method. Let me show you. Let me just get rid of this method right from here and I'm going to call here a method allocate to allocate a memory for the buffer. So here I'm going to specify 4 and using the buffer dot write method buff dot write I'm going to write my buffer. So here I'm going to say hey like this. We allocated a size of this buffer 4. So we specify here 4 characters inside this write method. Now just after that let me save the changes and execute this file again. I'm going to have the same result. So using this technique you can also write your own buffer. Now you notice you can access the buffer using array index. You are not limited to only access the buffer index. Just like you can access a buffer with an array syntax, you can also set the content of the buffer in the same way. So down here, I'm going to say buff and to the first index, I'm going to specify 1, 1, 1. So this is equal to O. So this is the unique code of O. Now let me just print this buffer. I'm going to console this down here. Save the changes and execute this file. As you can notice, I'm going to have O at the first index of this buffer. So I hope you understand how to work with buffer in Node. Next, we'll talk about what is exception handling. 